Well, I just thought I'd give you a short update of what I'm doing. Uh, this weekend I'm working on videos. Um, these are videos that I've shot of me creating the man and the woman that uh, is going with the uh, horse that I created uh, of last year. And uh, I've got 26 folders and each one averages about uh, six, 50 or 60 gigabytes of video and uh, that's eating a lot of memory and I've got to start stitching these videos together uh, re <coughs> editing them and uh, getting them ready to go on the DVD sets um, I've got the first 38 minutes uh, uh, done now and I'm working on the uh, second uh, set of uh, videos uh, this is just from one folder and uh, that's what I'm doing. I went and saw the doctor yesterday. He's got me on some medicine, and I'm going to be taking that for the next uh, couple of weeks. And uh, it seems to be working. I got to, uh, got to do that uh, because it was getting bad. And uh, um, back when I was a kid, back in the 1950s, I, 56, around 55, 56, I lived on Guam with my family. My dad was in the Navy. He was stationed at the Aganya Naval Base there in uh, Guam. And we were there for about two years. And I got uh, what, is, what is commonly called jungle rot on my foot. And uh, it's a fungus. And uh, we lived right in the jungle. And I mean, it was so hot and muggy. And and just we lived on in a house that was on stilts, a, a, a frame house that was on stilts. Uh, there were only uh, screens. Uh, there were only screens in our windows. We didn't have glass in our windows. There were big windows. The whole uh, level of windows was just one screen after another, with uh, levered or levered uh, window uh, shades or I don't know what they call them uh, things that cover the window when when you're not when you got a storm or something and you you prop them up with a stick and you bring them down they're wooden uh, covers anyway that's what we had and uh, it was primitive living and in fact down the road from us a uh, and it was a jungle road it wasn't a uh, paved road we lived right this this was pre-housing before we actually got on the base uh, when we first moved to to uh, guam uh, we got there on a ship uh, and the uss no actually yeah the uss barrett uh, my dad had, was already on the island my mom and uh, my self my two brothers or no my two my other brother and my sister both have passed away now uh, we're on the ship and uh, we not my, my poor mom happened to take care of all three of us we were all seasick and and I did learn how to s keep from getting seasick uh, on that trip it was a 14 day trip on a on a ship across the ocean anyway uh we lived in the jungle, and uh, these kids found a grenade uh, from World War II because there was a big battle fought on Guam to take it over from the Japanese, and uh, they didn't know what it was, and they pulled the pin, and it blew up and killed them. And that was still happening in the 50s. Um, I remember riding along the, we'd go on a Sunday drive along the shore where a lot of landing craft, the U.S. Marines and uh, military landing craft were still there on the shore rusting uh, away just hundreds of uh, landing craft. It was just mind-boggling how many. Uh, we even saw a couple of uh, military tanks from World War II that 
Well, they were both U.S. tanks, and they thought each other was uh, uh, the enemy, and they blew each other up and killed each other. It was that, it, it was that kind of a, well, a sad war. Uh, graveyards uh, where battles had taken place, and not a gravestone wasn't uh, damaged. There was every one of them were damaged with bullet holes and parts blown out by grenades and stuff like that. Um, I went to school, grade school there in Guam, and uh, we had to bus our we had to be bused to the school. And the school uh, play yard didn't have a fence around it, and so we were able to go across the road, it was a dirt road, to an old Japanese uh, bomb shelter that was uh, right across the street from the uh, school, and uh, I can remember how damp and smelly it was. Well, now that I've told you my life story, <laughs> I have no idea why. Uh, it all started this story about my life with fungus, and I thought maybe that's what I had, uh, because once you get fungus, it's, it stays in your system forever. Uh, you can never get rid of it, and uh, I thought it might have been a flare-up on my hand, and uh, it turns out it wasn't, so that was good news. That was terrible stuff. When my, uh, I didn't tell my mom about it for a long time, and uh, we were at uh, my Aunt Ella's and Uncle Jan's uh, farm in Colville, Utah, back, well, like, I, probably in the 50s, late 50s, uh, after we got back from Guam, and my, the fungus on my foot was so bad that eventually I had to tell my mom about it because, and I, it, it just was getting to a point where I couldn't, uh, you know, live with it any longer. My uh, mom was a registered nurse, and uh, I took my shoe off and my sock off and showed her my foot, and she about fainted because it was that bad. It, she said I could have lost my foot if I hadn't have showed it to her. And so she started me on some medication, and she could give me shots and stuff like that because she's a registered nurse. And it eventually went away, but uh, it, it would come back every once in a while. So uh, the things you get sometimes uh, in places that you visit uh, stay with you forever. But thank goodness it wasn't that on my hand, and my hand's getting a lot better. Uh, it just looks really dried out right now, but that's what it was supposed to do. And, and he's going to have me start putting some cream on it next week. Uh, he wanted me to take these pills this weekend first before uh, I started putting cream on my hand. And then next, uh, on Monday I start taking a whole different set of pills on top of the ones I'm taking now. And then I start putting this uh, special cream on my hand to uh, take down the dryness. Alright, well it's all going to be taken care of. It just looks ugly. And I can't do anything about that. But I want to wish you all a, a happy weekend, and I hope it's going to be filled with family and fun and skiing or going to the beach, wherever you happen to live. Me, I'm working. You know, I work harder now that I'm, I'm an artist than I ever did when I worked for somebody, because I had set hours, and I got off at night. I'd go home and just sit down and relax, watch TV. Then I became a full-time artist. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right. See you next time.